Hey everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel and today I thought we'd do a quick but somewhat amusing video about cheap power supplies. Uh, I'm not going to bother turning the main camera on, uh, you all know what my face looks like by now. Um, but um, yeah, after playing around with the uh, squeeze box that we fixed in the live stream and a little update on that, I did work out that the uh, capacitor that had the destroyed via underneath it, um, yeah that via was just connecting to ground so I put a little bodge in to fix that up and um, yeah this thing seems perfectly happy although the display yeah it is quite tired uh, it does look slightly better in person than it does on camera though um, but anyway, during that live stream, I was powering this off the bench power supply, and uh, I still am. Uh, but that's kind of handy because you can see, uh, obviously, how much current this thing is drawing, and also limit the current in case there's still a fault, which uh, thankfully there isn't. But I was searching through my drawer of bits to find a suitable replacement power supply, and I did spot this one, which is actually kind of a little too chunky. Uh, it's a 5 volt, 5 amp power supply. These things apparently are designed for a 5 volt, 2 amp power supply, so um, there's plenty of headroom in this. But while I was looking through my drawer of power supplies, I also spotted these things, which I bought ages ago. And although I knew these were a dual power supply for 5 and 12 volts, um, something in one of them caught my eye. And you may notice the problem with this one right here. Yes, a couple of these capacitors have leaked. Um, and that seems to be the case for all three of these that I had sitting around. This one looks like it's the, uh, the best one out of the bunch. That capacitor is slightly domed, but hasn't really started to leak too much. Um, and I wasn't planning on using these for the squeeze box anyway, but um, I thought it was kind of funny that these things just sitting in my drawer of power supplies have gone bad just on their own. I've, uh, I've never used any of these. Uh, I bought them in the idea that maybe I could use them for like a Commodore 1541, you know, replacing the big bulky power supply with a modern switch mode thing. But thankfully, I never ended up doing that because if I had, um, probably would have caused some issues down the line. So let's move the squeeze box out of the way for a while. Uh, I do want to crack this one open as well and check it out because it's obviously a cheap Chinese power supply and uh, it is very lightweight. The weight is sign of reliability. Uh, but before we get to this one, let's crack open these little ones here. Take a closer look at them. So yeah, I've... I've never used these, never even took them out of the packet, and they've probably been sitting in that drawer for uh, the better part of two or three years. Um, but yeah, never ended up using them, and they've just gone bad just from sitting there. So yeah, this one looks the best, and yeah, it looks like it's just this cap that has started to bulge and leak. But um, I thought it was pretty funny that these things just sitting in a drawer, so out of direct sunlight or anything like that, um, and obviously not being used, have just gone bad by themselves. So I guess this is like a public service announcement. Uh, don't buy cheap power supplies off AliExpress. I actually got these ones because they looked half decent. Uh, if you look at the underside, there are cutouts on the board on the primary side uh, between active and neutral. Um, so it looked somewhat better than the other power supplies that I saw on AliExpress at the time, but um, obviously these are a complete junk as well. And the capacitors are all branded JYCDR, so yeah, no name caps, and uh, I'm not too surprised uh, that they've gone bad, I just didn't expect them to go bad, just sitting in a drawer, so I guess the the electrolyte formulation that they used in these things isn't quite right, and they've just uh, slowly been... I don't know, building up pressure, I guess. Um, yeah, pretty funny, but I guess not a huge surprise. Yeah, as you can see, this one is really bad. It's actually sitting slightly off the board as well, so it's basically bulging in both directions. And um, yeah, this one has got obvious leakage. This is probably the one that I spotted in the drawer and went, hang on a minute, fuck's going on with them? Um, so, um, yeah, I'm not going to be using these. I'm not this, I'm not big Clive, so I'm not going to try and reverse engineer these or draw up schematics. I could replace the capacitors and maybe the supply would be fine, but, um, I don't trust these at all. Now that I've seen this, um, even if the rest of the circuit is good, uh, it's not worth stuffing around with these kind of things. But as I mentioned, I was planning on possibly using one of these in a Commodore 1541 disk drive. And uh, I think, 
I may have actually put one in this, which is the power brick for a 1541 II. Uh, the 1541 II uses an external power supply and um, the original one that was in here had, I think the capacitor on the 12 volt rail had gone bad and that was causing all kinds of issues with the disk drive. Um, so I cracked it open, removed the potted brick power supply that was in here and replaced it with, I think one of these things but I haven't really used this power supply very much, if at all, since then. Uh, and that was also a few years back. So let's, uh, let's crack this open. It looks like I must have glued it. Uh, I must have used super glue because it's cracking open quite easily. Let's see if there's one of these power supplies in here as well and whether or not it's held up. Oh, no, looks like I used something different, but um, probably just as junky. Um, yeah, this thing hasn't been turned on in ages, so uh, there's not gonna be any stored up power in here, but you do wanna be careful when dealing with these little switch mode supplies because the, uh, the capacitor on the primary side is gonna be a very high voltage and could give you a shock even after you've unplugged it. Let's have a look. Oh, well, that's, that's kind of a nice surprise. Again, you know, no name cap, uh, at least on the primary side. And on the secondary side, yeah, a bunch more no name caps. But um, they haven't started venting their juices. Maybe there's hope for this particular one. I still wouldn't recommend running out and buying these because no doubt this also came off AliExpress. Um, yeah, best stick to, you know, DigiKey or Mauser, um, a, um, a proper parts supplier for your power supplies, but um, this one seems to be okay. Let's give it a measure. I'm not gonna bother trying to desolder these things. We'll just measure a couple of them. So it's supposed to be a 470 mic just here. And it's reading one millifarad, so a thousand microfarads. Uh, with an ESR of around 100 milliohms. So yeah, that's that's actually still good. Uh, it must be in parallel to another one of these. All right, looks like there's actually three caps in parallel. So there's two 470s and this 220 uh, all sort of paralleled together with an inductor in the middle of them. Um, so yeah, maybe those readings are correct but I'm not gonna bother pulling out these capacitors to be 100% sure. Um, this one over here is reading 1800 microfarads. ESR is still low, but yeah, that's kind of interesting. Anyway, maybe they're leaky in terms of, you know, voltage leaking across them, not physically leaky, but uh, I think they're still okay. Um, I definitely will replace this with a half decent power supply either way. Let's have a look at the capacitor across the primary side. Uh, 20 microfarads with an ESR of three and a half ohms. And it's a 22 microfarad rated cap. So that also still seems to be good. Um, well, at least it's nice that this one didn't go bad just sitting around by itself. These three, total junk. I am curious about this one though, because uh, while I'm still gonna order a decent brand name power supply off Mauser, um, I'm curious to see if I can use this in the meantime to uh, power the squeeze box. But I wanna crack it open first, which might be easier said than done. I'm not worried about messing up the case on this thing. Just wanna get inside. Seems to be only held together by clips, which is a nice change. I have had one of these power supplies that was very similar looking to this one, and um, it immediately went bang the moment I plugged it in, which was fun. Unfortunately, I didn't catch that on camera. There it goes. One more. Release. Well, no bulgy caps, that's good. They're also just no name whatevers. 
but they look okay. Uh, once again, I haven't plugged this one in recently, so I'm not worried about touching anything that I shouldn't. Is it just stuck to the bottom there? Yes. <laughs> so pretty dodgy LED. It's just a little resistor tacked on the back there that goes over to the LED and sticks out the side because why not? Is there even... Oh yeah, there is a little window for the LED there. All right, so there's a couple of caps on the primary side and a couple of caps on the secondary and one just to, I don't know, get the, the switching stuff started happy. Not an expert on switch mode power supplies, so could be talking complete shit. Let's have a look at one of these caps though. 44 microfarads ESR of 1.9 ohms, and it is apparently a 15 microfarad 400 volt. Hmm. The other big cap uh, is reading the same thing, so they must be paralleled somehow. That's a 33 microfarad. That's a 15, so um, what is that, 48? Seems good enough. What about on the, oh, let's have a look at this little tiny one. 4.7 microfarad, 50 volt. Uh, yeah, 5.4 ESR is pretty high, 113 ohms, but maybe there's a resistor to sort of throw that off a little bit. Hmm, not so sure about that one. And these two down the back are different values that I cannot, I cannot read because they're facing the other way. So all this Celastic stuff is in here, so can't even freaking move them to see what they are. Let's see what reading we get there. It might tell us. Okay, uh... 3,800 microfarads, SR is 38 milliohms, so that seems pretty good. But again, there could be other stuff in the circuit throwing it off. Big one reads the same. So once again, they appear to be, oh yeah, they are definitely in parallel. I wish I could see what they were. I like that the legs to the LED are not insulated or heat shrinked or anything. They're just flapping about in the breeze just sitting slightly off the board. <laughs> uh, quality stuff. Yeah, I don't know, the more I look at this thing, the less I wanna plug it in uh, and especially have it powering um, something that took me a couple of hours to repair. So I'm just gonna avoid all of that. Um, that's all junk basically. Let's, uh, just for fun, let's have a look at one of these caps, see how they read. They all appear to be 470 microfarad, 25 volt. Oh, we're getting 340 microfarad. ESR of 5.7 ohms. It looks like it's basically in parallel to this one. So if there were three or four more of these in parallel, um, you know, we'd be almost back up to the right capacitance until they leaked out more of their juices. On the other side, um, 813 microfarads, ESR of 120 milliohms. So that seems actually pretty good. Although these two do appear to be in better condition. They don't seem to have bulged or anything. I don't know which one is which. They're, like I said, there's a it's a 12 volt and a five volt rail and it doesn't seem to be obvious which side is which. Uh, one of these rails is probably still working just fine. The other one, probably not so great. So I think the lesson for this video is don't trust cheap power supplies uh, from AliExpress. They may look perfectly fine and perform just fine when you first get them, but uh, even just sitting in a drawer, they can go bad. And it's not the first time I've seen this kind of thing on, um, you know, especially these cheap no-name capacitors. Uh, there's been plenty of stuff that, um, you know, I'd go to my parents' house and they'd be like, oh, we've got this USB charger thing stopped working crack it open, 100%, it's a bad capacitor and one of these, you know, no name brand ones. So um, don't buy cheap power supplies of AliExpress and especially don't buy cheap capacitors of AliExpress. Uh, stick to the name brands, you know, Panasonic, Nishicon, Rubicon, 
those kind of things that you find on Mauser and DigiKey, um, you know, respected websites with respected name brands, stick with those things. Uh, they're not always going to be perfect. You know, there could be a bad batch that we know, won't know about for 20 years time, but um, they're likely to hold up a lot longer than something that's just sitting around doing nothing. Uh, anyway, that is it for this video. Um, it was just a quick one. I spotted these and thought that's kind of funny. So uh, figured why not make a video on them? Um, if you do have, you know, power supplies like this, uh, you might want to have a quick check on them. Uh, see if they're still looking okay. Um, yeah, let me know what you thought about it. Um, I'm not going to start doing YouTube shorts or anything, but maybe these shorter little videos where I just find random stuff and share it with you guys. Um, let me know if you find this interesting. Um, that's it for now. Thank you to all my patrons who support the channel and help me to continue making videos like this. And of course, thank you all for watching, liking, subscribing, all that kind of thing. Uh, that also helps out, you know, with the YouTube algorithm. And uh, I will catch you in the next one. Bye. In the bin!